Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. The wind is going to be our biggest issue now that the showers and thunderstorms have moved out, but we'll likely end the day with one more round of showers and storms. I'll show you the timeline. Neighbors in this area waking up shocked to see what's behind me, a tree down blocking an entire road. Coming up, I'll tell you more about the cleanup efforts. The Prime Minister of Japan is visiting North Carolina today. Just ahead, how this visit comes as Japanese companies are investing billions in our state. We have that and so much more to get your Friday morning started. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Renee Chu, and it is a gorgeous Friday morning with all that sunshine out there and blue skies. It's also very windy, too. Yeah. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center, though not as windy as yesterday. Now, yesterday, uh, right, uh, say mid-morning, we ended up with winds gusting 40 to 50 plus miles per hour, knocked down a lot of trees. You can see Nick Pearl in there, uh, but one of those trees is still um, lying there. And so lots of cleanup to do in our viewing area for today. We check out Warrington. You can see the trees moving around here. We're seeing gusts right now up to 20, 25 miles per Per hour, but it looks gorgeous out there. Our wind is out of the west southwest at about 10 to 15, and our temperature in the triangle is 60 degrees. Check in the, the wind gusts. The wind gusts are really starting to relax a good bit. We're looking at 17 in Southern Pines. We're gusting to 18 in Clinton and 28 in Rocky Mount. So that's a good bit lighter than it was just about two hours ago. Our maximum wind gusts so far today have been 38 in Durham, Raleigh, and Goldsboro, and about 30 in South Hill, 24 in Southern Pines. So you can see the winds have really eased up. But this afternoon, once we see our daytime heating, kick in. That may mix up the atmosphere enough for some gusts up to 20, 25, uh, maybe even 30 miles per hour. And then we're going to end the day with this trough moving through. That's going to be a disturbance that rolls through and brings us the potential for some scattered showers and thunderstorms at the end of the day. By the time we get to lunchtime, we'll start to see some clouds rolling through. It'll be partly to mostly cloudy through the afternoon. By 5 or 6 o'clock, a few isolated showers and an embedded thunderstorm or two roll through. And that should move out by around uh, 8 or 8.30, depending on where you are. But of course, that's dinner time. If you have plans to be out uh, heading to an event, heading to dinner, um, it may be a little wet on and off this evening. We'll see highs in the low 70s for today, which is right on normal. And then temperatures just skyrocket next week. I'll show you the change in the pattern coming up, Brian. All right, 802 right now, Elizabeth. Just notice this on the camera. It looks like we have a temporary closure on 40 westbound as you head between Wade Avenue and Harrison Avenue. Not getting any reports of a crash out there, working to find out exactly what that is. But you can see the traffic is certainly building there as you head out of the west side of Raleigh. We do have a report of a hit and run investigation out on 40 westbound right around the Trinity Road area. So I'll watch that and have another update for you in about 10 minutes. We've also been watching some breaking news on the south side of Holly Springs. Sky 5 has been over a crash there on the 55 bypass at Main Street. Live pictures there show Holly Springs police working to get this cleared. We have a tow truck on the scene. We did see an ambulance earlier. Looks like uh, police are directing traffic through that busy intersection. We're measuring some pretty heavy delays on 55 westbound westbound, leaving Fuquay Varina heading up toward Holly Springs. So give yourself a little extra time this morning. Another crash I'm watching up on the north side of Wake County on 98 at Camp Canada Road to the west of Wake Forest. Still seeing a little bit of a westbound delay through that area and an earlier crash on the eastern side of Fuquay Varina. Still an active scene apparently at Old Stage Road right around John Adams Road. Elsewhere around the triangle, our major routes are still holding up fairly well. We do have some backups forming on 40 westbound approaching Gorman Street as usual in Durham, the usual slowdowns on 885 there in both directions. We've also been watching some weather-related problems, a tree down on the northern side of Raleigh in a the neighborhood there. Let's head out to Nick Perlin in the WRL Breaking News Tracker on Wingate Drive near Payne Drive. How's it looking out there, Nick? Well, Brian, the tree is still down behind me, and neighbors who've been walking by have expressed shock. Obviously, it's not something you see every day to walk outside and see this massive tree knocked down. I'm going to step out of the way and show you. Uh, you guys can see it's blocking the entire street here. Uh, we did see about 40 minutes ago somebody with the city of Raleigh come out here and investigate and uh, kind of, you know, just figure out what needed to be done to move this tree. Uh, we're still waiting for crews to get out here, but I'm looking back into the woods here and the root goes way back into this wood wooded area so it just goes to show just how large this tree is of course we'll when the crews get out here we'll be sure to update you and we'll keep you updated on the cleanup process reporting live in raleigh nick perlin wrl news
And more cleanup efforts underway across our viewing area. Power is back on for thousands of people in Durham and Wake counties. Yesterday's powerful storms left down power lines and fallen trees. Duke Energy crews spent the morning working to fix them. You can see them working on a power line on Anderson Street near Duke University. The storm also knocked out power in Lee County. Crews in Sanford worked yesterday to clear this tree that was resting right on the power lines. Around the corner, part of a giant oak tree fell onto a house. A burst of wind also blew the roof off an auto sales building. And people to our west are cleaning up today as well. The National Weather Service will be in North Wilkesboro to look at the damage and confirm whether a tornado touched down last night. This BP gas station was badly damaged. Trees also fell on some homes in the area. No injuries were reported. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida will be touring North Carolina today. He and Governor Roy Cooper will be visiting some of the biggest Japanese-owned companies in the state. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from the governor's mansion. And Kelsey, it's certainly remarkable when a foreign leader comes to Raleigh and he will be there for a special luncheon uh, at the governor's mansion. Renee, the Prime Minister will arrive here to the Governor's Mansion in just a few hours, so you may be able to see some tents already set up here behind me, but take a look at this video now from when the Prime Minister arrived here at, uh, in Raleigh yesterday when he touched down in RDU. Our crews were there. Uh, today, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Governor Roy Cooper will visit two facilities, the Honda Jet World Headquarters in Greensboro and the Toyota Manufacturing Plant in Randolph County. Both are owned by Japanese companies. Today's visit comes just one day after an announcement from the Japanese biotech company Fujifilm Diosynth. They're expanding their facility in Holly Springs, investing $1.2 billion and adding more than 600 new jobs. This puts North Carolina in a global showcase. Uh, we know that Japanese companies believe in North Carolina. We have 30,000 people in North Carolina going to work every day for a Japanese company. 225 of them are here. And the Prime Minister will get a little taste of Southern hospitality this afternoon at the state luncheon here at the Governor's Mansion. Uh, there will be North Carolina barbecue there and also some bluegrass music, so he'll be able to enjoy that. Our crews will be uh, live here, keeping you updated on his visit throughout the day. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. And today, the mayor of Durham will hold a news conference following three separate shootings that happened within two hours. The first shooting happened on Truman Street just after 4 p.m. yesterday. A 16-year-old was shot and killed. The second shooting happened less than an hour later near Fayetteville Street and Linwood Avenue. Two men and a boy showed up at the hospital after being shot. Then, just after 6, a man was injured in a shooting on West Pettigrew Street downtown. Mayor Leonardo Williams says city leaders need to take action to reduce violence in Durham. It's really a numbness. Um, you know, I, I'm more, more motivated than ever to continue to fight uh, for policies that will actually reduce this type of, these types of outcomes. And Williams says that he hopes City Council will reconsider using shot spotter technology in Durham. They voted last month not to bring it back after it was used on a pilot program basis last year. Durham Public School employees who are dealing with pay issues will get a chance to see exactly how the newly proposed budget will impact their paycheck. In terms, Superintendent Kenny Moore says district officials will give classified employees an individual breakdown at the next board meeting. Moore is asking for a 12 percent budget increase. It includes $8 million to fully fund salaries for the system's 1,800 classified staff. Over the past few months, there have been numerous changes to classified worker salaries. This weekend, the North Carolina Courage take on the Portland Thorns in NWSL action at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary. And you can watch it tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on WREL. And coming up for us on Fox 50, former President Donald Trump's criminal trial will be a historic one. What New York City officials are doing to keep everyone safe with all of the attention the courtroom will be getting. And as people remember the life of O.J. Simpson, there's a renewed interest in his memorabilia. The trends sellers are noticing after his death. And of course, yesterday was windy. We're going to see some gusty winds through this afternoon, and we may end the day with a few isolated showers and thunderstorms. And then we transition to a hot pattern for next week. I'll show you how close we'll be to record highs coming up.
It's 8 13 and a beautiful morning. We started early on uh, with a few lingering showers. Those have moved out. We're seeing clear skies everywhere. It's really windy in Goldsboro. This camera is pretty susceptible to getting pushed around by the wind, so you can really see it. And the trees are uh, really moving around out there, too, there in downtown Goldsboro. Um, Apex breezy, too. So is Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant. And, of course, our newsroom there on Hay Street in Fayetteville. Right now, we're seeing winds gusting up to 28 miles per hour in Rocky Mount, 17 in South Hill, and 18 in Rocky the gusts are in the white box on the right. So if that box is empty, it just means that we haven't seen any gusty winds there in the last uh, little little while, last few minutes. Our winds are steady for the most part out of the west southwest at about 10 to 15. So it is not as windy as it was yesterday when we saw all those trees fall. That happened mid morning yesterday. And at that point, we were gusting 40 to 50 plus miles per hour. This afternoon, the winds may pick up a bit with some daytime heating. We warm the surface of the earth, starts to mix up the atmosphere a little bit, and we could see some gusts up to around 30 miles per hour. That's not strong enough to cause the kind of damage that we saw yesterday. As a matter of fact, uh, we had a number of power outages around lunchtime in uh, Sanford, back over toward uh, Raleigh as well. And now we just have uh, a few hundred uh, reports of customers out there in Johnston County and up in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. So they're getting uh, all that repaired pretty quickly. There's still some downed trees in a few places. We have one more disturbance with this system kind of rotating through like the, the, the arms of a pinwheel. And that happens during the evening commute or dinner time. Kind of a you know, bad timing in terms of it being Friday and people wanting to be out and about. Here's two o'clock in the afternoon. The clouds start to fill in a bit. And by five or six o'clock, we have a few scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms. We're not going to see widespread rain everywhere, but we will see some scattered rain. So you could run into that if you're headed out for uh, dinner or movie or whatever you're doing this evening. 71 the high today and then 72 tomorrow. We'll see lots of sunshine. It's still going to be a little breezy, but our winds will begin to uh, drop down over the next couple of days. And Sunday won't be quite as windy. Sunday starting to be a bit warmer. High have 82 and our highs are in the 80s for much of next week. Saturday looking like a cooler day. If you're not ready for the heat, we'll see highs in the low 70s. Uh, Apex Peak City Pig Fest is Saturday and the weather looks lovely for that. Mid 60s around lunchtime and then into the low 70s. We'll hit the mid to upper 80s starting Monday for a streak that ends at 90 degrees on Thursday. I'll show you how close that is to record highs. Coming up, Brian. It is 815 right now, Elizabeth, and that temporary close of 40 westbound around Wade Avenue has is now over. Traffic is flowing freely through that area. I think it might be related to the Japanese prime minister's visit uh, as they head out of Raleigh. Still seeing some lingering delays, though, on that outbound side of Wade Avenue merging into I-40 and on the eastbound side of I-40. A little bit of a slowdown through there. Also still have some backups through Holly Springs on 55 with that earlier crash on the 55 bypass right around Main Street. The heaviest delays right now are on the westbound side of 55 leaving Fuquay Verena heading up toward that Main Street intersection. We're also seeing a little bit of an eastbound delay and a southbound delay leaving downtown Holly Springs heading down toward the 55 bypass intersection. Still watching delays also on 98 around Camp Canada Road in the Wake Forest area, especially on the westbound side of 98. It might use sense for your commute to use Purnell Road over to Stony Hill Road and pick up 98 on the other side of that crash and those backups. And uh, that earlier crash in the southern part of Wake County on Old Stage Road around John Adams Road apparently still is an active scene with a little bit of a backup showing up in both directions of Old Stage. You can see those backups that formed on the west side of Raleigh on 40 westbound between US-1 and Wade Avenue from that earlier closure. There's also a report of a hit and run on 40 westbound right around Trinity Road that may be contributing at least a little bit to those delays. We're looking good in Durham, though, with no trouble showing up on I-40 or I-85. <laughs> Thousands of people in Louisiana are still without power this morning after severe weather this week. The National Weather Service confirms two tornadoes touched down in the state on Wednesday. The tornadoes left behind a trail of damage. At least four people were hurt. Federal and New York City officials are ramping up security ahead of former President Donald Trump's first criminal trial. That starts on Monday. The Manhattan Criminal Court building, where that trial will be taking place, will be monitored by cameras, uniformed officers, drones, as well as bomb-sniffing dogs. This is the first criminal trial of a former U.S. president in history. Trump has been in and out of courtrooms for the past year, so that's given law enforcement a head start on how to prepare and what to expect. Since Trump's indictment, law enforcement says threats against judges, district attorneys, and others have become much more common.
And now to a potential terror threat at the U.S.-Mexico border. Border agents say a man on the terror watch list was arrested after crossing the border, but then released into the U.S. 48-year-old Mohammed Carwin illegally crossed into California in March of last year. His name is on a terror watch list, identifying him as a member of a terror group that's killed Americans in Afghanistan. Border agents suspected that he was on the watch list when he was arrested, but lacked co corroborating information. He was released without border agents contacting the FBI or Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And this is just one of three incidents in the past two years involving suspected terrorists being released by Customs and Border Protection, according to the DHS Inspector General and Congress. Bond is set for a North Carolina Central student charged in connection with a shooting outside a residence hall. 19-year-old Eric Randall was arrested on two charges. A judge granted him a public defender and then set his bond at $95,000. He is also banned from campus and not allowed to contact the victim. A Durham assistant district attorney says Randall did not pull the trigger, but he conspired with the shooter. Police are still looking for that person. The shooting rocked the campus community. The victim in this case, Tyon Richardson, is also a student and he has serious injuries. No word on how he's doing this morning. Happening now with the WRA Live Center, we continue to follow this breaking news out of Memphis this morning. Around 2 o'clock, uh, two Memphis police officers were shot. We do know that two suspects are now in custody after a shootout with police, after police were called to this area because of a suspicious vehicle. Memphis police just updated some information and to let us know that a third police officer was grazed by a bullet. That police officer currently being treated for minor injuries. Again, we're waiting for a news conference to find out exactly uh, what happened in this this incident. As soon as that news conference happens, we'll, of course, let you know here in the W Area Live Center. Ken, thanks. Strong polarizing reaction continues to flood social media after the death of O.J. Simpson. He died at the age of 76 after a battle with cancer. As Chanley Painter explains, the embattled athlete's past is being thrown back into the headlines. Reactions pouring in as the nation and the world learns of the death of O.J. Simpson. The controversial former athlete and actor passed away Wednesday after battling prostate cancer. He was 76 years old. I'm not a football fan, but even I knew who, knew who O.J. Simpson was. Simpson's first encounter with fame came on the football field, playing nine seasons with the Buffalo Bills and two with the San Francisco 49ers. Even if he wasn't producing on the field, you might say he was still scoring with the fans. And while he went on to star in TV commercials, shows and movies, the 1994 killings of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ronald Goldman changed his future forever. Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder. In 1995, he was found not guilty of the murders, but a 1997 civil trial jury found Simpson liable for the deaths. Attorney Gloria Allred, who represented Nicole's family, telling ABC News Thursday, quote, I feel that the system failed Nicole Brown Simpson and failed battered women everywhere. I don't mourn for O.J. Simpson. Meanwhile, basketball great Magic Johnson tweeting out support for Simpson's family, writing in part, quote, Cookie and I are praying for O.J. Simpson's children and his grandchildren following his passing. I know this is a difficult time. Others, like Caitlyn Jenner, kept their feelings blunt, posting to X, formerly known as Twitter, quote, good riddance. That was Chanley Painter reporting. Memorabilia from OJ's football career is seeing a peak in interest. The price for his signed jerseys, helmets, and trading cards have gone up, and it's expected to continue. New this morning, former Vice President Mike Pence has a new job. A conservative Christian college in Pennsylvania says Pence has accepted a teaching position at the school. Grove City College made the announcement yesterday. The same day, Pence delivered the keynote address at a conference there. Over his years in public office, Pence has been open about his faith, often referring to himself as, quote, a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. Well, check out this video here. This is the moment an eighth grader saved the day at Rocky Mount Academy by putting her unique hobby to use. Caitlin Boone is a certified beekeeper, and she stepped in to capture this swarm at her own school. Thousands of bees had made a home in the courtyard at the school, and teachers were forced to keep kids inside because of the safety hazard. That's when Caitlin stepped up and said she could help remove the bees. She says she got into beekeeping when she was nine, and this removal project was a rite of passage.
don't know how fascinating these creatures really are. It was really exciting because that was actually our first swarm by ourselves. And Caitlin says that she learned most of what she knows from the Wilson County Beekeepers Association. She says her ant bottle and sell their own honey. You can learn more about that on our website, WREL.com. A new travel warning for U.S. citizens living in Israel. Why the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem is urging Americans to stay safe. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning and happy Friday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. We are in for a nice day and a nice weekend. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner with a beautiful look over Clinton this morning. All the clouds and the rain from overnight last night have moved out and we're seeing blue sky everywhere. Gorgeous look at Clinton. Um, the trees are really moving around as we take a look from Alfredo's restaurant. You can see the flag really whipping there too. Our wind gust forecast 25 to 30 miles per hour this afternoon. But yesterday when we ended up with the damage, that was 40 to 50 plus mile per hour wind. So no damage, just a lot of wind out there. Our current temperatures range from the upper 50s to mid 60s, 64 in Tarboro, 60 in Irwin, and 63 in Rocky Mount. Heading out for some pickleball this evening. Once we get to 5 o'clock during the evening, we'll have the chance of a few scattered storms. I'll walk you through that on Futurecast on Fox 50 coming up, Brian. Elizabeth, just getting reports of a crash apparently blocking at least part of the intersection of McDowell at Lane Street in downtown Raleigh, seeing some heavy delays on Lane Street right now. Also, some earlier uh, problems on 40 westbound around Wade Avenue, creating some pretty big backups on 40 west between US-1 out to Wade Avenue. It's gradually getting better, but we're still seeing about a five-minute delay between those interchanges. Also, look out for some heavy traffic on outbound or westbound Wade Avenue heading toward that I-40 merge. And some lingering delays in Holly Springs this morning after an earlier crash on the 55 by pass at Main Street. Michelle. Thank you, Brian. Governor Roy Cooper is hosting Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida in North Carolina today. They'll visit two facilities owned by Japanese companies, the Honda Jet World headquarters in Greensboro and the Toyota manufacturing plant in Randolph County. Next on Fox 50, the call for change after three separate shootings occurred within two hours. And next on today, a dad of four girls goes viral for calling out those who tell him, I'm sorry. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We have a blustery start out there. All the cameras are showing the trees blowing around. We have gusts up to almost 30 miles per hour. I'll show you what the winds will feel like through the day and when we may end up with another round of showers and storms. Durham's mayor is calling for action after three separate shootings left a 16 year old dead and four others injured. The steps he says city council leaders need to take to address the violence. And Japan's prime minister is making a historic visit to North Carolina. The facilities he's touring today ahead of a big celebration at the governor's mansion. Thank you for joining us on your Friday, your beautiful Friday morning. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Renee Chu. Yes, the weather out there right now is just perfect for Friday vibes, right? Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center. With all that sunshine, a lot of people will be hitting the golf course. They will. And uh, what a weekend and what a week next week. I mean, everybody's going to be out in shorts and T-shirts next week with this incredible warm-up on uh, in our forecast. Here's a live look at Southern Pines, Longleaf Golf and Family Club. Gorgeous blue sky out there right now. We have a southwest wind at around 11 miles per hour. And we're seeing some gusts anywhere from about uh, 20 to 25 miles per hour, 60 degrees as our current temperature. We're gusting to 19 in South Hill, 28 in Rocky Mount, 18 in Roxborough, and 17 here in Southern Pines. Uh, the areas that you don't see a number in the white box means that we haven't seen any gusts in the last few minutes, but we are looking at blustery conditions across most of the viewing area. Earlier this morning, we saw gusts up to 38 miles per hour in Durham, Raleigh, and Goldsboro, but the winds have begun to settle down a little bit, and through the afternoon, we're looking at 25 to 30 mile per hour gusts. That's not as strong as it was yesterday when we had trees down. That was 
those 40 to 55 mile per hour winds. We are likely to see one more round of some showers and storms. This disturbance right here is starting to fire up a few thunderstorms there in southern West Virginia. It's going to swing through our area later on today. At lunchtime, we start to see more clouds filling in. It'll be partly to mostly cloudy through the afternoon. And then around the time of the evening commute through dinner time, that's six o'clock right there. We're going to see a few isolated showers and thunderstorms it could affect your uh, travels um, out and about to dinner, to a movie um, or to a show. So just keep that in mind. We're not quite done with this. You can again see that uh, uh, just quick chance of some showers and th storms for just a couple of hours. Our high 71, we could see the hottest day of the year so far next week. I'll show you when coming up, Brian. 832 right now, Elizabeth, and we are still tracking some delays on 40 westbound. We had a brief temporary closure of 40 westbound right around Wade Avenue for a little while, and uh, it's clearing up around Wade Avenue, but that delay is kind of working itself back into South Raleigh. This is I-40 out at, Fa or at uh, Avent Ferry Road, and you can see a little bit of a slowdown there in the distance. Right now, we're measuring a nine-minute delay on 40 westbound between US-1 and Wade Avenue, but you see uh, with that live update just then it dropped to a two-minute delay, so we are seeing some improvement there. Still some brake tapping, though, between Gorman Street heading out toward the Chapel Hill Road area. Then it slows down a little bit again as you head toward Wade Avenue. There's a report of a hit and run investigation between Trinity and Wade that may be contributing to at least some of that. Also getting reports of a crash in downtown Raleigh on McDowell Street at Lane Street. Some good news that earlier crash on 98 in the Wake Forest area and on Old Stage Road just east of Fuquay Varina. Those have cleared, but we still have some activity out on the south side of Holly Springs with a report of a crash uh, earlier at 55 Bypass and Main Street. It is is getting cleared up right now. We've also been watching uh, some problems in a North Raleigh neighborhood with a downed tree. Let's head out there with the WRL breaking news tracker and Nick Perlin at Wingate and Payne Drive where that tree is still lying in the road. Nick. Brian, that's right. It's still here and neighbors who've been walking by have been shocked to see this massive tree blocking a road that they drive through every day. Take a look behind me. I mean, it is huge. Uh, it's, like I said, it's blocking the entire street. There's actually a car that's coming up right now and it's ha having to take a, a turn onto Payne Court so, uh, because the tree's blocking it. We, about 40 minutes ago, we did see somebody with the city of Raleigh come out and try to assess uh, what needed to be done to remove this tree, but it's it's a very big tree. You can see the branches and the trunk of it. Uh, it's going to take some time. We're still waiting for crews to get out here and remove the debris. Of course, once that happens, we'll be sure to update you on how this thing is progressing and how it uh, is getting cleared. Uh, when that happens, we'll have updates. But for now, that's the latest. Reporting live in Raleigh, Nick Perlin, WRL News. And more cleanup efforts are underway across our viewing area. Power is back on for people in Durham and Wake Counties. Yesterday's powerful storms left down trees and power lines. Duke Energy crews spent the morning working to fix them. You can see them working on a power line on Anderson Street near Duke University. Strong winds also caused some damage in the Five Points neighborhood in downtown Raleigh. This happened at Reeves Drive and Hudson Street. The large branch knocked out electricity to more than 200 homes in this area. And the storm also knocked out power in Lee County. Crews in Sanford worked yesterday to clear a tree that was resting on power lines. And around the corner, part of a giant oak tree <clears throat> that fell on a house. A burst of wind also blew the roof off an auto sales building. Today, the Prime Minister of Japan is in North Carolina for a historic visit. Fumio Kishida will tour some of the biggest Japanese-owned companies in the state. WRL's Kelsey Coffey shares Governor Cooper will be joining the Prime Minister before a dinner honoring his visit. The Prime Minister will be here at the Governor's Mansion later this afternoon. You can see that staff is already setting up for an event that's going to happen later today. And take a look at this. Our crews were there when the Prime Minister landed at RDU last night. Today, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Governor Cooper will visit two facilities, the Honda Jet World Headquarters in Greensboro and the Toyota Manufacturing Plant in Randolph County. Both are owned by Japanese companies. Today's visit comes just one day after an announcement from the Japanese Before biotech company Fujifilm Diasynth. They're expanding their facility in Holly Springs, investing $1.2 billion and adding more than 600 new jobs. This puts North Carolina in a global showcase. Uh, we know that Japanese companies believe in North Carolina. We have 30,000 people 
in North Carolina, going to work every day for a Japanese company. 225 of them are here. The prime minister will get a little taste of Southern hospitality this afternoon at a state luncheon here at the governor's mansion, where they will serve signature North Carolina barbecue and play some bluegrass music. So we'll be sure to have crews here to keep you updated on his visit throughout the day. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. Today, the mayor of Durham will hold a news conference following three separate shootings that happened within two hours. The first shooting happened on Truman Street just after four yesterday afternoon. A 16-year-old was shot and killed. The second shooting happened less than an hour later near Fayetteville Street and Linwood Avenue. Two men and a boy showed up at the hospital after they were shot. Then, just after six, a man was injured in a shooting on West Pettigrew Street downtown. Mayor Leo Williams says he wants city council to reconsider the use of shot spotter technology. I don't see the logic in taking away resources when we desperately need everything that we can possibly have. I just don't see it. City Council voted last month to not bring ShotSpotter back after it was used as a pilot program last year. Today's news conference is scheduled for 11 a.m. This comes as a community event about reducing violent crime in Durham County was already planned for today. Sheriff Clarence Burkhead will host the event about Project Safe Neighborhoods. It's a nationwide partnership between federal, state and local law enforcement. The goal is to help develop plans to reduce violent crime. Today's event is from 11 to noon over at the Durham Justice Services Department on East Main Street. And new this morning, the American Embassy in Israel is warning government employees and their families not to travel outside of central Israel, Beersheba and Jerusalem until further notice. It all comes as Israel prepares for an attack from Iran as soon as today or tomorrow. The Wall Street Journal reports a U.S. official familiar with the matter predicts the strike possibly on Israeli soil within the next few days. Iran threatened to take revenge for an April 1st airstrike on its embassy compounds in Damascus. Interest rates may be going up again soon as new data shows inflation is once again heating up. The Consumer Price Index that came out yesterday shows the highest 12-month increase in almost a year. Some Federal Reserve officials say another rate hike will be necessary if the progress that's been made on inflation doesn't stick. The uncertainty may influence the stock market and create doubt that loan rates will improve. Erin, hey, piggybacking on that here in the WRA Live Center, we've been market watching stock futures this morning. Even the Wall Street expected to open higher this morning. Take a look at the big board. You can see Dow futures uh, off more than 100 points. Similarly, the S&P and NASDAQ futures also in the negative territory this morning. And sort of what you just mentioned, Renee, we got a couple of uh, inflation reports this past week. The first is a CPI report that shows what we pay for goods and services like groceries and gas. That report showed an uptick in inflation, which raised concerns about whether and when the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates. And Renee, you just mentioned that aptly. Also, the PPI report showing producer prices rose less than expected in March, which calmed investors just a bit. The PPI report uh, measures what producers pay for goods, which in turn is passed on to us as consumers. We'll, of course, have the opening numbers in our next hour of news right here on Fox 50. Some golfers will be getting an early start at the Masters this morning. First round play was sus uh, suspended last night because of darkness. The tournament was behind schedule after bad weather pushed back the start. And golfers who could not finish their round will be on the course starting at 7.50 this morning. They're out there right now. Tiger Woods is one of the golfers who still needs to finish his first round. He had five holes left to go when play was suspended. And Bryson DeChambeau is the leader right now. He is shot seven under par in his first round. This weekend, the North Carolina Courage take on the Portland Thorns in NWSL action at Wakeman Soccer Park in Cary. You can watch it tomorrow night at 7, live on WRL. The smallest home on the market in North Car uh, Northern California has a big asking price. Still ahead, what's behind the huge price tag and what's next for the home's future? And it's a Comic-Con event for sports fans. Coming up, how Fanatic Sportsbook is bringing together some of sports' biggest stars for a special event.
844, and we're taking a look at sunny skies everywhere, but it is breezy. We take a live look at Goldsboro, and boy, the wind is really whipping those trees around and the camera, too. A beautiful blue sky everywhere, though. Uh, we're seeing that in Apex and Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant, and of course, uh, that's our newsroom there on Hay Street in Fayetteville. Beautiful start to the day, but it is windy out there. The wind gusts are in the white box on the right, so we're gusting to 17 in Southern Pines, 19 in Clinton, 23 in Goldsboro. Our strongest wind gusts right now, 28 in Rocky Mount. Uh, for comparison, you know, yesterday, mid to late morning, we had uh, a band of rain that came through with some strong winds. Those winds were 40 to 50 plus miles per hour, and that knocked down some trees. So nothing as strong as that for today. However, we may see some gusts 20, 25, 30 as we get into the afternoon. We had a little bit of heating out there. It tends to warm the surface of the earth, starts to mix things up a little bit, and the winds increase a bit through the afternoon. But once we get to sunset, we should see those winds tapering off somewhat. We'll still be a little bit breezy, though, for tomorrow. Uh, we had a lot of power outages, or at least some pockets, I should say, of uh, a lot of power outages yesterday after that band of rain came through. Uh, we're just looking at a few hundred uh, customers without power in Johnston County and in Mecklenburg County, Virginia. So um, the winds definitely have died down and uh, crews have been able to uh, take care of things. One more band comes through. This is going to be a weak disturbance that starts to swing through a little bit closer to dinner time uh, tonight. Future cast for the rest of the morning is nice and bright, but we'll see a few clouds starting to uh, fill in by lunchtime. There's two o'clock in the afternoon and four o'clock. We'll pause it there at six o'clock and you can see a few isolated showers and storms. Now, there are likely to be people who won't see this because it will be scattered to isolated. But if you were planning that perfect outdoor table for dinner tonight, you might see one of these showers or even an isolated thunderstorm and some windy conditions coming through. That's likely to all move out by around 8 to 830. We're looking at breezy conditions, obviously, this afternoon and mild temperatures, a high of 71. And then similar for Saturday, winds a little lighter, but a high of 72. We're going to see a stronger flow coming out of the south to warm things up dramatically for Sunday at 82 degrees. And that that continues into next week. So for Saturday, enjoy those cooler temperatures. We'll see temperatures in mid-afternoon in the low 70s at the Apex Peak City Pig Fest. This is always a well-attended uh, and fun event. The weather's going to be really great for it. A little bit breezy, but really feeling comfortable. Then we jump to 82 on Sunday. And then highs are in the mid to upper 80s as we get into uh, next week. 90 degrees on Thursday. If we hit that 90, it'll be the first time this year, but the record high is 95. So even that 90 is not a record. A festival devoted to pimento cheese and a visit from some Disney princesses is happening in the Triangle. Let's take a look at this weekend's best bets. Now, if you love pimento cheese, then you'll want to head down to downtown Cary tomorrow for the Pimento Cheese Festival. It's happening from 11 to 4. There will be live music and some of the pimento cheese samples from local restaurants. Try some pimento cheese ice cream. There's also a pimento cheese sculpting contest. And on Sunday, you can head to Durham for a food truck rodeo. The event is from noon to 4. There will be more than 50 vendors on site. Face painting, a DJ, and inflatables, and admission is free. Also on Sunday, here are some classic songs during the Disney Princess the Concert over at the D-Pack. The show will feature some of your child's favorite princesses performing Disney classics live on stage. Tickets are still available. For more on these events and others happening this weekend, head to WRAL.com and search for Out and About. And tonight, Debulin Spring Concert Series begins at Debulin Town Hall, where you're looking live this morning. Tonight's concert will be from Love Tribe. There will be food trucks, craft vendors, family games, and more. It's all happening from 6 to 9 tonight, and you should bring your own lawn chairs or blankets. Ink lovers, listen up. The All-American Tattoo Convention starts today. It continues through Sunday at the Crown Complex in Fayetteville. There will be tattoo contests, wrestling, and more. More than 300 tattoo artists from around the world will be at this event. Tickets are $23. California state flower, the poppy, is blooming with force this year. Nature lovers say this looks to be a spectacular year for the poppies. So-called super blooms are happening right now in places including Joshua Tree National Park and many other parks in the state. The smallest home on the market in more than 10 years is up for sale in California's Silicon Valley. Get this, it's about the size of an average American hotel room. This 384 square foot home is listed for $1.7 million. It's in Cupertino where Apple is headquartered. But it isn't the home itself that makes it so special. 
the 7,800 square foot lot next to it is what's really unique. Realtors say the home comes with a wonderful opportunity to build a bigger home because there are fewer choices for home buyers in the San Francisco Bay Area. Like, a, like I mentioned earlier, like an investor or a builder would look at the opportunities that this uh, property has and, you know, build a nice 32, 36,000 square foot home and then end up selling it for like, you know, four or five million dollars. The home already has six offers. The highest offer so far, two million dollars. Wow. VinFast is expanding into the electric bike business. Take a look at this. It's called the VF Dragonfly. The design is inspired by the image of a flying dragon in the Vietnamese culture. And the company says the bike can travel up to 68 miles on a single charge. VinFast says you can begin buying the VF Dragonfly later this month. The list priced $2,500. Sports fans will have their chance to attend a Comic-Con-like sports event. Fanatics is hosting the first ever Fanatics Fest in New York this summer. It's a three-day festival that will mix sports, culture, and collecting. Tom Brady, Eli and Peyton Manning, Kevin Durant, Hulk Hogan, Derek Jeter, and Sabrina Ionescu are the headliners. Tickets range from $20 to $400. NC State's incredible NCAA tournament run uh, turned players like DJ Burns and DJ Horn into marketable stars. And the Wolfpack pair turned their on-court success into money off the court. Each player's got several deals for use of their name, image, and likeness. Thousands lined up to see them at the Applebee's before the Final Four. Horn also promoted brands such as TurboTax, CVS, and Adidas in social media campaigns. And you can see the DJs in person Monday. NC State is keeping the celebrations going for both basketball teams after their amazing runs this season. Monday night, the university will be hosting a party over at the Bell Tower for players and fans. Both Wolfpack teams will be there, along with coaches Kevin Keats and Wes Moore. The city of Raleigh will close Hillsborough Street at Oberlin Road and Horn Street for this free event. The Bell Tower celebration starts at 8 p.m. on Monday. A Melrose Place reboot in the works. Paramount Pictures announces a prequel to 2009 Star Trek and Tom Hiddleston is reprising his role in The Night Manager. Here's Ashley Dvorkin with your Hollywood Minute. Did you ever meet Richard Roper? The Night Manager is back on duty. The Star Trek universe expands and a Melrose Place reunion is underway in the Hollywood nation. I'm here to see you. Amanda Woodward, Sidney Andrews and Joe Reynolds are planning a move back to their old West Hollywood apartment. According to Deadline, a reboot of the hit 90s show Melrose Place is in the works at CBS Studios and is being shopped around to other networks and streamers. The follow-up will take place years after the original series, with Heather Locklear, Laura Layton, and Daphne Zuniga reprising their roles. The original aired for seven seasons on Fox between 1992 and 1999. You will always be a child of two worlds. The Starship Enterprise plans a voyage back to the big screen. Paramount Pictures is developing a prequel to J.J. Abrams' Star Trek reboot, which starred Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto. The film will be an origin story set decades before the 2009 revival. Abrams is on board to produce. Tom Hiddleston will be back on the night shift. Amazon, MGM Studios, and BBC renewed The Night Manager for two seasons, with the Loki star returning as Jonathan Pine. Season one aired in 2016. Season two will take place eight years after the season one finale. Hugh Laurie also returns to the spy thriller series as executive producer, but no word on if he will reprise his role as Richard Roper. What is it? Everything from 25 to 30 years ago is getting a reboot <laughs> in 2024. Yeah. That was Ashley Dvorkin reporting. Well, fans of Bridgerton are getting excited about new episodes. A new trailer for season three of the hit series is now out. It shows that this season will focus on the love story of Colin and Penelope. You can tune in May 16th.